So hello everyone and welcome to our HEC live webinar. So thank you for all of you being connected with us today for our live, live session with uh, my professor and Laure Cellier. And uh, the theme of our webinar is creating more values with less. So my name is Suzanne Mather and I am a pro program advisor for our MSc in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And we are speaking live from our Paris offices of HEC. So tell me, Anlo, how are you doing today? I am fine. It's a pleasure to be joining you today for this first webinar for me. Yes, it's your first webinar. So that's pretty exciting. Well, thank you for sharing this first time with us no, and pleasure. with all our viewers. So Anlo Cellier is our professor for the very famous course called Boosting Creativity and it's actually the first course of our certificate and our master and I must say it's a very popular course with our students so it helps them approach ideas in a totally different way and for some of them it maybe even makes them discover their own hidden creativity so I know what is your point of view on that on your course and your students? So on my course, uh, my, my point of view is that of a, of a camera, because obviously one of the challenges in developing this course was to do something online uh, that people all over the world could attend and feel that at an individual level, they had an experience of increased creativity, which was a big, big bet. Um, I had the pleasure to meet the first cohort uh, of this program uh, uh, during uh, the graduation ceremony in June, uh, and I spent, I didn't expect to spend these many hours uh, uh, with them talking about how uh, the course resonated uh, with each of them, and obviously very differently because you have entrepreneurs, you have uh, people who have their own company already, uh, you have intrapreneurs who work inside of uh, larger companies, and each of them uh, told me that they took very different bits uh, of the class. Uh, some implemented it in their teams, so not only do they apply the techniques that uh, we see in, in our class, but they uh, diffuse them uh, to other people working with them. So that's very exciting to, to see that, you know, a little seed that you give to, to these online students actually takes life uh, all around uh, the planet in, in very different organizations. Well, so that's a delight. Well, thank you so much, Alain. That's a beautiful testimony. Okay, so to give you the, uh, the lines of, our, of this webinar, first I will share you with you a few facts and figures about our business school HEC and about our master uh, MSIE. Then Anlo will be talking about creating more values with less. And of course, during our presentations and any time you can uh, send us uh, questions, comments, and we'll be making breaks to answer your questions. And then after Anlo's presentation, I will conclude in a few words on how you can apply for our master and maybe how you could get a taste of it for free. So please stay connected till the end. Okay, so our first slide. So our business school was founded in 1881. We are known to be the second business school in Europe and the first in France. Uh, we are ranked top 32 in the world for graduating CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Uh, HEC provides 45 di uh, diplomas and joint degrees with many other partners. And we are known as the first entrepreneurship school in France. So this is very important for our master, which is our core subject for our school, with a very strong link with our partner, Station F, which is the world's largest incubator in Paris. And of course, as you can see, we have the triple accreditation for business schools. So, um, one a very important part of our school is our network, our alumni network. You can see here a few names of our CEOs, decision makers, and politicians who were all graduated from our business schools. Our alumni network is 60,000 alumni, and we are said by The Economist very recently to being the first most powerful business school alumni network in the world, with more than 100 nationalities on our campus. So a few words about our Master in Sciences in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. It is 100% online and in English, hosted by the very well-known platform part and our partner Coursera. So online, you don't have to travel. You will, it's a, you will be saving on time and uh, expenses of traveling. And you can work from home, from your office, wherever. 
Our course is 18 months. The total uh, uh, the course is 18 months. There are 20 courses. The first courses are fundamental courses, and Anbong's course is the first one to be there. And the second part of our master are the 12 months of project-based courses where you work in a team of four or five students on a real case, and I'll be talking about that just later on. We have two intakes per year, every six months. So the next one is in December, coming soon, and you still have plenty of time to apply for that. And the coming one will be in June 2020. And so mm. just a few words on the, well, the crunchy part, the interesting, really sexy part of our pro uh, program are the project-based courses. You work on the real uh, case project, an entrepreneurial venture, which may be yours uh, or the, the, the project of one of your teammates. At the beginning of the project-based courses, every single student will present his project and whoever gets the most votes, whoever is the most convincing, well, his project will be selected and will go through those 12 months of 10 courses. During those uh, those uh, courses, of course, you are not allowed alone. You are uh, you are assisted by our coaches who are there to help you out. Uh, you are uh, coached by entrepreneurs, and you work, of course, in a team. And there is a lot of interaction, despite the fact that this program is online. You would be surprised by the interaction between our students. Uh, they have platforms, forums where they can discuss, and right from the beginning, right from your first course. They are already all on the platforms introducing each, uh, all, every single student, each other, introducing each other to each other. Uh, there is a lot of exchange and learning also that goes through the students and many even try to meet when they're traveling or if they're well, well, living in the same country, well, they do meet and create their own groups. Correct. Actually, I've uh, talked to many students who put that uh, forth in the discussion that they were, uh, they, they had not expected as much interaction among them. Uh, and also within the courses, we actually have teamwork or mm -hmm. team evaluations, uh, peer evaluations, mm -hmm. where students provide feedback on, on your uh, course uh, quizzes and assessments uh, and projects. It's not just the faculty to student, it's also student to student, much more so than we have students in our classrooms and mm -hmm. on campus. So that's kind of exciting. That's one of the main advantages of being online, you actually leverage much more interaction than in the classroom. Exactly. And the interaction can even be more than interaction. We have peers who created companies during the courses itself. So so it's it's a great surprise for us all, uh, this community that is being created with our online uh, entrepreneurs or future entrepreneurs. So first of all, before starting with your presentation, Anna, we would just like to have a little poll and we would like to know, you viewers, why are you here? So please, if you could kindly answer the poll that you're seeing right now. And uh, well, are you here just because you're curious or maybe are you planning to apply for a master? Or do you have a project or it's or, or and maybe you could have several answers that are possible. Maybe you want to create your own business so please, if you could answer, well, I see, well, 45 person people have voted, maybe just a few seconds more. If you can make an effort, more voters are coming in. So we have many curious people here today and also quite a few uh, who are interested in our, in our master. Okay, well, almost 75% of you have voted. I can see there are more votes. Well, okay, Andrea, thank you. I think we can, we can go for the next slide. So, Hello, I think now it's your time. Well, to tell us more about uh, your, your creating more value with less, I'm really impatient to know. Okay, uh, well, I see that uh, we have uh, quite a few people who have a general interest in the topic, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, because if you, if you decide to undertake a program like the, the online masters at HSC, uh, you have to understand that you're, you're a very special cohort in, in the history of the human species. <laughs> uh, so far, uh, people have been creating uh, value uh, happily and easily, uh, but the times have changed. So not only are we asking you to create value, but we're asking you to create value with less, uh, meaning you have to uh, deconsume, yeah, and you have to uh, particularly uh, pay attention to not taxing resources, uh, really natural resources. So, so the, the problematic of the entrepreneur today is not so much about value creation, but deconsumption 
value creation, which, which might seem uh, paradoxical. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Oh, uh, I'm just, can I uh, move? Um, all right, so to, to start with this, um, I think a, a tribute to uh, today's atmosphere in the business world uh, was provided to us by uh, IBM in a report that is now almost 10 years old, but it's uh, number one, the only uh, report of its uh, kind uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, it's still very valid today. So we have uh, just convergent data suggesting that this report is still uh, completely valid. This is a report, by the way, uh, that you can download uh, from the internet, it's free. It's called Capitalizing on Complexity. What is this report? It's uh, um, a major survey of the 1500 top CEOs and public figures in the world and uh, what their sense is of uh, how easily it is to surf the business world today, um, how well they, they do are they, how confident they are in the future and what are the, the critical skills for a businessman or woman uh, nowadays and particularly an entrepreneur. Uh, and here what's really interesting is no matter which part of the world these people work in, they are the best managers worldwide. Uh, they share the view, uh, it's pretty pessimistic, that uh, they can't really predict the future uh, beyond five years from now. Uh, the business world that they navigate is very turbulent. Um, they expect that they can go under in no time. Um, but the good news is some of the companies that they know or are aware of are doing better than other companies. And if you look at these standalone companies, these outstanding companies, uh, one thing they seem to share is an ability to create continuously amidst these very turbulent uh, waters. And so not surprisingly, the number one skill that these uh, public figures and CEOs uh, say a businessman or woman uh, should have is creativity. Uh, and here I insist, they say creativity before they say integrity or networking or uh, competence even, uh, which is kind of interesting, disturbing on some level, but uh, also interesting. And so there's this big call for creativity. And of course, when you call for creativity, it's like calling for you know, a divine intervention uh, or, or so it seems, right? So what is creativity? And creativity, there's a consensus nowadays uh, among uh, creativity experts that it's the ability to produce things that are both useful uh, and novel, right? So you, you need originality in a creative idea, but you also need a usefulness, right? You have to provide some value to the world. Um, and why is it in, important, particularly for entrepreneurs, you know, beyond CEOs and public figures, because entrepreneurs are in the heart of the job of creating new value. So during the, your program, you will be working on your project or maybe you'll join someone else in, in their project. Uh, that also happens which is pretty exciting about that, the specific community you join here. Um, but your job is to continuously create new value in a highly turbulent environment where everything changes, right? Uh, your competitors change, your collaborators change, uh, the, the legal system around you changes, and that forces you to almost daily rework uh, your creative value. So that's the fact, right? I mean, you're not, you're not just an entrepreneur in the same sense as someone in the 19th century, you know, building build big bridges and, and, and big roads all over the world. That's, that's kind of over. I mean, that, that can still take place, but that's not the majority of entrepreneurial work. Um, the problem we have is at the same time as you have to uh, come up with new value, uh, you also have to understand we need to deconsume, right? I mean, there, there, it's a mathematical certainty that if we don't deconsume and deconsume fast, uh, we're going to hit the wall, right? I mean, that's pretty. So, so sorry if I'm uh, uh, talking to big optimists who are not there yet, but uh, we are <laughs> pretty clear about that. Uh, scientifically, it's it's uh, it's an evidence, right? So at HSC, we take it at heart to uh, not only bring value to the world, but bring value that is long lasting. Sustainability is one of the pillars of our school. Um, and so one extra layer of pressure we're going to put on you uh, during this program is to create value while impacting less uh, the environment, uh, the natural resources, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, so that uh, we build sustainable uh, value uh, as well. 
All right, so just do it, right? And uh, if I could this morning uh, have your, your immediate reaction, I would ask you, well, how would you do that? And when I, when I ask that to my students, uh, there is a, a weird atmosphere, a, an awkward silence, right? Because it's, okay, fine, that, that, that sounds lovely, but very paradoxical. Uh, so how do, you, how do you create more value with less? Um, if you think of historically the way we've, uh, we've understood innovation, um, probably the, the biggest idea on the topic has been offered in 1942 by uh, uh, an economist, Austrian economist called Joseph Schumpeter, who uh, proposed that uh, innovation happens through disruption. Right? So you, you have this uh, notion of creative destruction, uh, which uh, is, is not very good for sustainability <laughs> because it means that innovation happens through leaps where uh, we create new worlds and new systems and new disruptive systems where uh, every time we innovate, many people lose their jobs, uh, many industries fall apart, and then at some point some new industry and some new jobs are going to, to appear. And that's lovely. Um, uh, the good news with that is actually, if you look at the data, a recent study uh, from the University of Chicago suggests that actually most of innovation is not like that. It's not disruptive. So we, of course, we all have in mind, you know, the example that Netflix, for instance, uh, that disrupted completely the movie watching business and so on and so forth. We can, we can easily reminisce about some examples of uh, disruptions. But if you look at the bulk of innovation, like all of innovation, actually, it looks like most of innovation is incremental, is pretty continuous. And rather than involving thinking outside of the box, as many of you, I'm sure, have heard or uh, have learned that you should do, uh, what we find instead is the, the best innovation, the most traction in creativity is actually uh, obtained by thinking inside uh, the box. So yes, you can uh, create more value with less. There are examples, and today I'm going to uh, talk about two examples. Uh, and there are also, and that's pro probably the, the, the best news, there are systematic ways of achieving uh, this, this goal. But Alor, wait a minute. I have a question. Is it really possible to teach creativity? Ah, uh, hmm. so that's interesting. Yes. Um, so in my in my live courses, that's actually the first pushback I get on day one uh, from from almost a, it's kind of funny to see every year. It's almost half of the classroom goes like, what, what, what do you mean we can teach creativity? Yes. Um, and that's fairly recent. Uh, not many business schools around the world offer creativity courses. Uh, I believe the last I saw we are five. Uh, universities, mostly in the US and, and us in France, where we do formalize creative thinking, yes. So we do teach creativity. You can teach creativity. We've known that for, uh, so we've known that confidently for the past 30 years only. So that's one reason why it hasn't diffused yet. So many people don't think you can teach creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and the other reason is companies, organizations have learned that, you know, the old way that you can't really teach creativity or rather it's easier to just hire creative people uh, because teaching creativity, that's going to be very time consuming. And who do you teach creativity to? Can you teach all employees, etc., etc. So these considerations have contributed to the idea that mm -hmm. uh, you can't really teach it. But, but, but we can, and well, we have courses, and, and that's and actually my, my course is uh, completely about that. So yes, even in, uh, at HSC, I have a course in six sessions of three hours, where the bet is at the end, you will think differently about business ideas. Well, that's so wonderful. there are techniques mm -hmm. that you can give to people. Of course, if I had uh, 50 hours of course, I'd be happier than with uh, 18 hours. But even in 18 hours, you can question the way that you think about business ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, generally has traction. You're very intelligent people. Many of you are very creative generally in your life. The idea here is whatever your level of creativity at the moment, uh, it's like a capital that you can increase uh, also through training. So the idea is we uh, take it upon ourselves to train you at, at thinking in a way that provides you two big uh, advantages. One, we uh, we bet that after the program, you're going to have ideas that you wouldn't have had without these techniques, number one. And number two, uh, increasingly important nowadays is to get ideas, but to get them fast, right? Because, I mean, if you are uh, heading a company 
uh, where uh, a competitor shows up. Well, you have to rework your value, right? So you have to be creative continuously. Again, this idea from earlier on and fast. And that's exactly what many of my candidates say. They need to find ideas faster than competition. Exactly. So and yeah, we are very happy to have a course like yours, which is quite an exclusive course, from what I understand. That um, it is not yeah, very. I mean, at least in Europe, no one else. Well, there are very few creativity researchers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's if you think about the fact that it's been 30 years that we systematically study uh, scientifically creativity, it's very young uh, as a science. And there are reasons for that, which I talk about in, in, in class. Uh, but, um, but, but just to understand, it's, it's very few people. And then there is a lot of pushback, obviously, and for good reasons, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, any new scientist, you should uh, you should uh, try to, to see whether they are truly serious. The good thing with uh, the creativity techniques is either they work or they don't. So uh, the bet is uh, on average on, on the students I've had, and I've had several hundreds at this point, uh, I get a very positive feedback. So uh, the bet is if you do these techniques, um, they at some point are going to work, right? Maybe not the first time you're going to apply them, but, but then the second, third time, yes, something is going to happen. Uh, and that's what I, I talked about with the, the students from the first cohort. Uh, they said mm -hmm. it, it was it was addictive. And you know, uh, another purpose of this uh, course is it's not just a course that you take and then you're done. It's it should fundamentally change the way that you think about business ideas. Mm. Well, thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, another thing, and, and here I'm, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be nasty. But uh, um, another thing to understand, if you if you were to join the the HSC Paris uh, online uh, program, is our motto is the more you know, the more you dare. So we don't just want you to come and and create value uh, for you or for uh, to, to make a quick buck, right? I mean, there there is a sense of of responsibility. And so, of course, in addition to creating value for you and your employees and, 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 and the economy uh, immediately around you, we will push you to also uh, contribute to this uh, consumption uh, movement. So how do you do that? So you might say, well, uh, that sounds all lovely and philosophical, but uh, practically. Um, and that's another thing I wish to insist on. All of our courses are incredibly hands-on. Uh, I think I should say to me, uh, so I used to, to work in the States. I was uh, mm -hmm. previously at the New York University and before that at the London Business School, very pra pragmatic places. But I have to say, I should say uh, has been the place where I saw the most hands-on, uh, no BS, pardon my French, but, uh, but courses uh, where, where you really try to, to get to achieve something uh, with, with what you work on, right? I mean, otherwise, why would you do it? Uh, so you, you, it's a diploma where you truly have a transformation. And if you look at um, all of startups uh, that take off in France every year, uh, you know there's this romantic notion of the entrepreneur who is a self-made man and comes from nowhere and has no diploma uh, because the schooling system is so alienating, etc. Actually, if you look at the bulk of, um, of uh, startups in France, 20% of startups in France have a founder or co-founder coming out of HSC. Wow. Twenty percent. Yeah. Now, if you add Polytechnique, you know, the engineering school on top of the Saclay, yeah, that's another fourteen percent. So that's one third of startups in France that take off, where one of the founders come from uh, either HSC or Polytechnique, anyway, at Home Ecole. Mm. So it's really a tribute, I think, to mm. training. Yeah, it just doesn't happen like that. Right, to this notion that you, you wake up one morning and better you invent Google, that doesn't happen. <laughs> you have heavy training, you have talent. Again, we, we, we are very excited when we, when we take you as students uh, because you, your capital and your values and your passion and your ideas, that's the bulk. But these things need to be shaped, uh, you need to be uh, trained. You need to interact with other people. Yeah, in all likelihood, you won't do this alone. You need to meet high quality people, which the community we create online is really uh, exactly that. I mean, that's what's really exciting. Huh? It's to see that uh, when you talk to people on the day of uh, the, 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 the graduation, it's not, oh, we're so thankful for the faculty we had. It's no, it's like we're part of a family now. You know, there's almost a, a mafia mm -hmm. uh, thing about it. <laughs> that, no, but in, in the good sense, yeah, kind of a, a, a feeling of belonging, mm -hmm. which to be honest with you, um, before I developed the course online, I didn't know could exist. 
online. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, the biggest surprise. I think the fact that being online creates this community, uh, this feeling and very strong connection. And, and the fact that it's online also is such an international program. Okay. And our students love it to interact with people from all kinds of countries and continents. And they'll be working on the same project and from different continents. And everyone is adapting to everyone, adjusting to the time schedules and its its future and it's really exciting our first uh, our first students feel really like pioneers our first uh, cohorts and and it's true and it's a wonderful adventure so they is, are is this future really well uh, and it's interesting the because um, it, it's very commonplace to hear you know nowadays it's faster behind screens and uh, you can't have the same level of interaction uh, by a screen or long distance with uh, with people, and I couldn't disagree more with that. I mean, it's it's not general. Uh, generally, this might well be true. Uh, take uh, your children away from screens as much as you can, for instance. But in the specific case of entrepreneurs, the world over getting together, I think the the online community might actually beat the the, the live course uh, in -class formula courses, yep. that we have uh, on top of our hill in in uh, that's which is lovely for other uh, types of uh, foresight but if your focus is really on being uh, an entrepreneur and on on, on uh, building a project and while bringing your project being surrounded by that community and having this uh, phenomenal engine right uh, behind you uh, I think I think that's uh, yeah that's the way to do it. Yep. So but now I've become convinced, which I wasn't uh, necessarily. I was very agnostic in the beginning, but now I'm I'm a believer. All right, so let me tell you about examples of of how it's done. You know, how do you create value while you're consuming? Uh, one of my favoriteest uh, examples around at the moment is QRAD. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. QRAD is uh, this thing uh, with, which you're seeing here. It looks like a heater, yeah, the black rectangle on the wall. It does look like a heater, but it's, it's, it is a heater, but it is also a data mining computer. So let me uh, tell you how uh, people uh, behind this, this uh, product uh, reasoned. They found that uh, computers are energy ogres, right? I mean, you, you, in order to have computers function, they produce a lot of heat. Uh, and inside uh, every computer, there is actually a ventilator, right? Uh, to, to cool down each uh, computer. So if you go to computer rooms in large companies, uh, it's, it's devastating, right? You get air conditioning on, uh, and um, actually the whole ecosystem of computers consume 8% of electricity nationwide. That's the, the data I have for France. This is a project that, that was won in France, but uh, you could uh, easily extrapolate to other uh, Western industrialized societies. So 8% of electricity uh, just coming from uh, the heat and the cooling down of computers. At the same time, it's interesting if you still focus in France to just for comparison purposes, uh, to, it's interesting to know that energetic precariousness affects 8 million people in France, right? So people who lack energy and particularly heating, right? So you get too much heat in one corner uh, that you, you cool down as much as you can and you get a lack of heat in many uh, households uh, uh, at the same time. And the insight that uh, these entrepreneurs had was, hey, wait a minute, what about if our computers become heaters, right? So uh, it, it takes a certain mental visualization to get there, yeah? mental visualization, which we perfectly understand nowadays, um, and which led to QRAD. So what is QRAD? It is a computer that I plug to your wall, uh, and that computer is going to do data mining for companies. So I'm going to have a, a central headquarter that's going to ask the different computers to do some data mining, number crunching, literally, but in your home, in, as opposed to being in an office, right? And the big advantage is not only do you get heat, you get free heat. It's free energy, right? So uh, not only are you giving heat to people who need it, but also to people who could not pay for it, right? So think of uh, all these places uh, where, you know, for instance, uh, the elderly, you know, right? Uh, energy consumption is a, is a huge cost to them. Uh, many people live in a lot of precarity in their old age in France, uh, and that would be uh, free energy provided to them. Right? So you have to think, it seems easy, you know, if once you describe it, you're like, well, why haven't we thought about it before? 
well, it takes actually mental flexibility. It takes going over something called functional fix the net to think of it, right? I mean, for we, we lived for entire decades with, uh, with uh, towers of computers with big air conditioning, as opposed to moving the computers away and placing them inside of people's homes. Uh, so that's one uh, great example, I think, of how you create more value, right? So you have these uh, very uh, capable computers, right? Uh, going for big data, big number crunching, uh, bigger than ever before. And because it's bigger than ever before, and because there is extra power, you're actually able to uh, heat up entire rooms. And do you know how many houses so the system installed? At all. At the moment, it's still a startup. Mm -hmm. So they have, uh, and, and with each startup, obviously, you want to produce heat, but not too much heat. Mm -hmm. So instead of placing it in your house or my house already, which you can, but it's mm -hmm. very expensive. Mm -hmm. That's also the early, the, the first computer, the first heaters are expensive. What they are doing is they're heating up entire offices. Wonderful. So it's B2B. Okay, now, right? that's great. But uh, it's very likely that you know, mm -hmm. whatever, three, five years from now, mm -hmm. you'll be able to actually implement that mm -hmm. inside of your mm -hmm. place, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's, uh, yeah, uh, big offices, hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, retirement homes, mm -hmm. right, where heating is a, is a big thing. This is the cost mm -hmm. of it is humongous for these places. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the advantage of having, uh, of having these products uh, becomes, uh, becomes uh, interesting. That's great. So one little thing for our viewers, we're waiting for your questions and remarks, uh, comments, please, please send us questions and we'll be most happy to answer them because there are just a few there waiting and well, we're waiting for you to, to, to comment and to react to, uh, to our presentations. Thanks. Okay. And All right. Maybe I'm going to give you uh, some inspiration with a second example. Uh, this one uh, was co-founded by an HSC uh, alum and was accelerated by our HSC incubator. Uh, we're talking about Optinium. Optinium is an app that uh, if you live in France, you can download and try for yourself. Uh, and it's an app that's been uh, created to increase the consumption of fresh foods. What am I talking about? Well, in France, we throw away about 50 kilograms, 110 pounds of food per capita per year. Yeah, if, you, if you look at all the food that's thrown away, uh, in total, it's 10 million tons of food that we throw away every year. And so in uh, the case, in the same, same thing as with heating, on the other hand, we have 6 million people who uh, experience food precariousness. Right? Um, so the people behind Optimium did not aim at solving this entire problem, which is bigger than them, but they uh, wanted to contribute to it. And we thought, well, how uh, could we use geolocalization to actually uh, make it less likely that businesses, uh, so in Paris, where it started, businesses uh, would throw away food. And so what they have is what you, you see here on that picture. Uh, you have uh, restaurants and bakeries and uh, outlets where fresh food is being made and sold every day, that when they see that they will be throwing away stuff like a sushi restaurant, for instance, has to throw away at the end of the day, they can't keep sushi overnight. Um, as of a certain hour, they can uh, sell you the fresh food at a discount, right? So the bet for them is anything they push to you is at least 25% cheaper. I know I go for sushi twice a week, thanks to these guys, uh, at 40% cheaper, uh, and it's around my place. So the idea is you're, you're being pushed notifications of all the restaurants, bakeries, etc., around you uh, that are about to throw away food, and you get access to this food at a, at a lower uh, price. This is particularly important since uh, a law was passed that now forbids that supermarkets throw away food. Uh, restaurants know that it's going to come their way very quickly, and so they need a plan B, right? Because they can't. It's it's uh, it's going to be uh, too much, uh, too many fines to pay uh, if if uh, they throw it away. The alternative for them to throwing it away is giving it, right, for free. Uh, which can be very heavy on a restaurant. So you have that sweet spot where you can uh, minimize what you're losing mm -hmm. by appealing. For instance, uh, right now, the customer base is, is largely made of um, people aged 18 to 25, so mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they are in Paris, Nice, and Rennes. So they are, they are expanding quickly. 
they're also expanding, their expansion is also a function of how many businesses understand that there's more to gain than to lose from uh, joining up uh, this system. And it's, uh, it won the, one of the 10 best startup of the year uh, two years ago, uh, and it's doing uh, incredibly well. Mm -hmm. So it, and they are not the only ones, actually, they, they inspired other um, ventures such as Phoenix, uh, some people might know Too Good To Go. Uh, so it's always this idea of you create value because so the primary value here is not so much saving the planet, it's making, uh, saving money, right, for, for consumers and saving money for the restaurant. The secondary benefit is obviously um, uh, contributing to, to, to this anti-waste movement, right? Uh, so it's, it's an interesting example, I think, of uh, another example of a deconsumption that's not done purely for uh, uh, pure reasons, right? I mean, it, it, oftentimes I, I hear people say, oh, well, but deconsuming it means we'll be losing money. Well, no, that's an example where that's not the case. The heater uh, I presented uh, before is also an example where that's not the case. It just takes another way of creating, one which hasn't been the default, one we can teach, and one we do teach very aggressively, let me tell you, uh, because there is just so much uh, so much uh, good and, and, and value, uh, value economically and value socially to be, to be gained from it. So maybe we can see if we can address a few of our questions. Uh, we have a question from Elizabeth saying, do you think the rental model is a good way of deconsuming? The rental model, oh, that's really interesting, Elizabeth, that you asked this question because I had coffee with an architect this morning. And uh, um, if you talk about the rental model as in renting spaces, and uh, so I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that's the case. I was talking about co-living this morning. Uh, which is a, a big um, model of uh, value creation that's coming our way, certainly, uh, in which instead of uh, buying an apartment or renting an apartment, we're going to rent a room in an apartment or a corner mm -hmm. of an office. So that's getting increasingly in place uh, with humongous uh, advantages for society. Again, we're talking, uh, you know, oftentimes you, 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 in value creation, you bump into the elderly or uh, the planet. <laughs> so, uh, this morning, uh, talking about um, about the rental model, uh, we were uh, seeing uh, new new forms that uh, take place in Paris of uh, apartments, for instance, where an elderly isolated. Um, you might be aware that isolated elderly are unfortunately the norm nowadays. Uh, there are 40% of children who don't see their parents, so their parents are by themselves in their old age. Uh, and this system of co-living would allow someone relatively younger to share an apartment with someone relatively older uh, and make sure that this person has all they need, be able to call for you know, help if uh, the elderly has a problem or a medical emergency, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, the, the rental uh, model, if Elizabeth, that is uh, what you're referring to with your question. Uh, is definitely uh, one one big model. It's not new. Huh? I mean, as we know, I mean, we we applied it to apartments. Uh, we've applied it, you know, to two two side platforms uh, such as Airbnb or Etsy or Uber is also the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so of course you you have. Uh, it's interesting that you mention that because there are models, there are shapes, forms of innovation that are being basically cropped and transferred to. Uh, domains where no one had thought of uh, applying them. And that, that's a source of tremendous innovation, yes. Okay, and Thierry also is, is asking, are you addressing both new business startups or current business willing to grow or to differentiate from competition? Everything, everything, especially uh, because a lot of the techniques we do, again, are uh, about thinking inside the box. <laughs> if the box is your current business, then all the better. Yeah, we don't we don't smoke the carpet in, in this class. Yeah? Okay. We don't uh, we don't do voodoo waiting for an idea from the gods, right? I mean, no. it's, uh, <laughs> it's really very hands on, and hands on means we start with what exists. Uh, entrepreneurs are people who look at the world as it exists and are profoundly dissatisfied with the way things are around them for whatever reason, and that that pushes them into action, right? If you're that kind of person, the program is for you. Okay, wonderful. 
Well, then, Laura, if you want to continue with your presentation. Uh, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm back to that. Just okay. do it. Uh, so I hope uh, that this very short, very brief discussion uh, motivated some of you to come join the, the lot of us. It's fun. Uh, I didn't expect it would be so much fun. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I, I did the online course thinking, well, let, let's see, you know, let's put myself out there and, and see whether I can talk to people I don't see, I don't know, who are completely heterogeneous and might hate my course for all I know. Uh, and in the process of developing the course, it's been a lot of fun, first of all. Uh, I was struck by how professional uh, the team at Ashesley was in the process, uh, in, in this incredibly daring venture. I can tell you we were among the first mm -hmm. to create, uh, if not the first, to create an online certificate uh, of that type. But then the best was when I met the students. So I could, if, if you're um, uh, thinking of, of uh, doing this program, Try talking to someone who came out of it, because I think that these are our best ambassadors, because they are high on it. I mean, I, I didn't expect to to have so much happiness uh, coming coming out of it, uh, and and many projects uh, that are inspiring to to the rest of us. And sorry, I'm going to be mean. I'm going to end on something pretty raw. But if we don't make a big impact, if you don't make a big impact, no one else will. Right? I mean, you know, we can't sit back and just wait for whatever governments and countries and nations and other entrepreneurs out there uh, to do it for us. Uh, I think we have to take the matter in our own hands and we can. We have tools to do it. So let's let's just do it. And the more you know, yes, the more you contagiously there. So that's the one I would add the word contagiously, particularly in the case of the online certificate, because I have seen firsthand that uh, beyond a set of courses online, we have managed to create a, a, a beehive of a community, uh, even way more. That's what I find most most uh, striking, even way more than what you have on campus, which which is really exciting mm -hmm. and, and, and fun to see. Okay, well, Landor, thank you so much for your yes, presentation. So, so now I'll just give you a few words about all those well now who are super excited and say, yes, well, I really want to join this master because it seems so exciting. And the courses like Anlos course, Boosting Creativity is making you very creative to maybe start your application for a master. So you may be wondering, well, can I apply for this MSc? Well, yes, if you do have five years minimum of professional experience. So why this five years minimum uh, professional experience criteria? Well, mostly for the project-based courses because you, we need uh, team members who have an experience, who have an added value who's going to help you work on your project on your maybe real case the startup you want to to create in a few months so we need students with five years minimum of professional experience you need to hold a bachelor's degree obviously to be proficient in english since the whole course is in english and uh, for those who are not native or do not have a degree from an english-speaking uh, university we ask for a toefl for an english test and of course to be with an entrepreneurial or innovation spirit or really have this project which is already on and maybe not doing too well or you have this idea in mind since so many years you want to start this company you have this idea of a, uh, of a, of a product of a concept but you don't have the toolkit you don't have the skills because maybe you're coming from a technical background so you miss that so you really need it and of course, this is a master. So we ask our students to work hard and to work well and to learn all the knowledge from our professors. So in average, you have to count 20 hours of work per week. Those are the basics about our MSc. So to, to, to give you a, a general idea of our MSIE, so the tuition fees are 20,000 euros, which is really a very attractive deal for a master at HEC, you have, of course, the possibility to pay in several installments. Maybe some of you say, well, oh, I'm not too sure if this is the right time because I don't have, well, 20 hours uh, to give for this master per week, or maybe I'm still too young. I don't have those five years of professional experience, uh, and maybe I don't even have the funds. Well, there are different options. You can start with our certificate, if you wish, which, are, which covers the fundamental courses of our program. And you will be having boosting creativity in the, in the certificate, 
or maybe you'll say, well, okay, I wanted to get a taste of the SMS MSIE before really applying. So we have MOOCs, we have specializations for a very uh, interesting price, which will um, give you an idea of what is the content of our MSIE. And of course, everything is available on the Coursera platform. So, well, thank you so much for your attention, our dear viewers. Thank you, Anlo, for really being here with My us. Pleasure. And we do appreciate that, well, despite the traffic jams in Paris, you made it on time to be with us. Thank you, Andrea, so much for helping us on the technical side. A few words for all our candidates who wish to finalize their application. Well, the next deadline is on November 4th. And of course, for those who say, well, I really want to join this program soon. Well, you still have plenty of time to start and finalize your application because our first course is on December 16th. So you have my name here, Suzanne, with the name of my other colleague who is a program advisor to Elizabeth Villet. You have our contacts. Please feel free to, well, to send us questions, to send us any kind of feedback you have on this uh, on this webinar and Nor again thank you a lot thank you Suzanne. it was a pleasure being with you all and uh, we'll hope to see you soon goodbye bye